game side about nothing. The Cronk Games Podcast. In the mid 2000s, two nerds with a website tried to make it last. Welcome to the dance. Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to a game site about nothing, the Crunk Games podcast. I'm Ray Barnholt. Over there is Alex Fraley. Hi, I'm here as well. And this is technically our final episode. I say technically because I got an idea for something else. You'll see at the end of the show. Uh, Ooh, bonus. And this is just going to be about kind of the last real year we sort of had the site going. Um, last time we talked about how things kind of slowed down a lot in 2005 because basically our lives were changing. You know, we had gone out of our respective funks in some respects and just looking ahead at what was going on. Uh, there were new funks to get in in the future, not to worry, but uh, we'll, we'll discuss that in due time. Nevertheless, uh, Crunk Games as the website just kind of fell by the wayside, naturally, you might say. And uh, I don't think it was like a great loss or anything because it was just kind of a lark for those first couple of years and just us trying to have some fun and see if we can get some kind of uh, portfolio going in a sense. But we're still dumb kids with a dumb website. Uh, I like a lot of different kinds of websites. Uh, I thought ours was pretty all right. Oh, you should have um, said that at the first episode. It's shit. too late now. We were talking it, about it, other it websites on the first episode. <laughs> uh, Fark. Oh, God. No. Um, it served, as, yeah, like you said, it served as a pretty uh, serviceable portfolio, I guess, for a while. Because I remember when I did apply for freelance jobs, I would include I would include the professional work I had done up to that point. But I would also include Crunk as like, see, I could be wacky, too. Oh, 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 oh. I don't even remember what I did. Did I do that sort of thing? Maybe. I don't really remember because I wasn't really applying to a lot of jobs with a resume back then. Anyway. I don't know. I, I, I do remember that even as an English teacher, like, you know, when you're in your 20s and your resume is just an empty broom closet? Yes. Um, I, <laughs> I would like, I'd put crunk games on my resume when I applied to like English teaching jobs in Japan, like as yeah. if to prove I have some kind of work ethic. Look, I wrote for this uh, website. <laughs> I sort of made a website. Sure, it was the other guy, yeah. but I was on it. <laughs> uh, my name's on there sometimes. Yeah. I'm an outlet. That means something <laughs> to somebody. Uh, I'm an outlet for wacky forces. Um, maybe I didn't put it on the resume, but I did, you know, write like cover letters that would specifically refer to video games as interactive entertainment. Just to make sure that... Uh, we're calling it as uh, mature as we can. <laughs> I went through that. Yeah, I went through that phase, uh, I think, in high school when I was trying to overcome the stigma of video games, especially in front of my parents. Yeah. Well, I was trying to overcome the stigma in a professional sense, you know, to let people know that, yes, I've been a writer professionally about interactive entertainment, and I'm very That's passionate right. about it. Entertainmental media. Yeah. And as you can see, this article called Joel's penultimate poonstravaganza it really <laughs> illustrates my passion for interactive entertainment. <laughs> On the bleeding edge of the industry. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, we're going to talk about those sorts of things language-wise today. Um, but basically, it's our final years having the site active. I think that starts in 2006. What do you know? We go from 2005 to 2006. Just like a calendar. Sequential. We got it. So the big thing in 2006, at least for me, as ter in terms of the website, was that I redesigned it again. This time, I moved the site completely over to WordPress because uh, previously it was all just HTML files, much like we had done all the time at the GIA and I believe Game Forms, <laughs> uh, because that's all I knew as well as far as making a web page. It was just, just put some HTML in an HTML file and the browser will show it. And uh, in some ways, that's still what I <laughs> understand about web development. But I put in some extra work, and I got a new web host and moved it all to WordPress because it is a real content management system, and I could 
do something simply with the layouts and the theming. And so I just made like a simple theming set of files. I'm not going to try and explain how WordPress works or anything, but just trust that I knew what I was doing and I made this new site design on it. Um, and uh, yeah, it was much it was much simpler in scope. So I kind of made it look like a lot of websites at the time did because web blogs were taking off, Alex. And uh, you had <laughs> no, no, no acknowledgement, <laughs> no acknowledgement I, of web blogs. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm expressing quiet reverence all for the weblog <laughs> okay, okay, is all. Fine. Yes. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I, I had my life journal. I was already up on the blog lifestyle. All right. Well, the silly point I was going to make is that a lot of those uh, blogs were kind of like one column in the center of the page instead of like one thing like stretched out 200% of the width of the window or whatever. I moved it. I moved this new design to that sort of thing where it's just one big column, a feed, if you will, of all of our articles, just like that in the center. And it was a bit cleaner because um, we knew we were winding down and we were kind of done. And so we didn't need to pretend to do anything like news updates, for example, on our front page. It was always just going to be the articles front and center in this new design. And we didn't have to deal with any sidebars or any funny stuff like that. Just put it all together, organize it make it a nice feed and um oh yeah by the way we got an rss feed out of that out of using wordpress and so uh we are technically a weblog because of wordpress um and so uh, not just the news uh was going away because we weren't doing that live i was just using the redesign as an excuse to remove anything that was viewed as outdated or maybe otherwise weak so uh yeah the news the news archive why'd you look over at me when you said weak weak <laughs> again, you did it again. <laughs> You're not even hiding it. Ah, uh, I mean, you wear glasses. Your eyes are weak, for one thing. I mean, that's, that's okay. That's you a got sign me. of weakness. That's true. You can't All join right. the air force with that. Not legally. <laughs> <laughs> I, I snuck in the canteen. <laughs> I can't fly, but I can eat <laughs> and cook. <laughs> a mean bolognese anyway <laughs> the news and the news archive so we had an archive page where i put all the old news stories just in case anybody would ever care uh it was again just back then it was just copying the gia but i got rid of that a long time ago on the website i wrote like a roundup of like the most unsung turbo graphic 16 games because those were some of my favorite things I was playing, you know, ROM wise at the time. And I thought, oh, this could be a thing later on. And so I kind of made it a series in a sense, in my head anyway. I was like, these are the, uh, what did I call it? The unsung, or the underrated classics or some shit, some re really lame name. It was the TurboGrafx 16 edition. And I was like, well, uh, I don't think that was very good. And I don't think I'll do it again. So let's just get rid of it. So that was one of the weak ones. Looking at Alex, some of hey. the outdated stuff like the Game Boy Advance Buyer's Guide, which uh, if you're listening to the show from the beginning, you'll know I just reinstated it, so it's actually back up. But thank I, you because I, that's I think that's the kind of content that never goes out of style. <laughs> yes, the 2003 Game Boy Advance right. Buyer's Guide. You have to know what's on the horizon now that you've bought a Game Boy Advance SP. Harmony of Dissidents is that out yet? Oh yeah. Okay. I liked it better than Ari of Sorrow, but I know it's kind of a tumultuous thing now. I think some people have flipped on Ari of Sorrow even. Um, really? I like Ari of Sorrow. People generally agree, though, the one right after that, the DS one, the first DS oh, one. Oh, Dawn of Souls? Yeah. No, not Dawn of Souls. <laughs> no, Is Dawn of Souls? No. That's, that's Final Fantasy. Yeah, right. Uh, that's confusing because Dawn of Souls was a pre-DS GBA yeah, what Final they? Fantasy. Um, Dawn of I, Sorrow like, right, is Castlevania. That's right, Dawn of Sorrow. Because right, you know, yeah, right before a lot of games, try, you know, tried to have DS in the title. Yeah, and when it's Castlevania, you have to think of like emo words. Right, right. Um, so Harmony of Despair. Harmony of Despair <laughs> was the HD one. Um, um, languid Afternoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, sad birthday party. Concerto of crying in my bedroom. Perfect. Um, Incels Lament. Ca <laughs> Castlevania colon um, Minuet of... <laughs> I don't even... I got nothing. Uh, fugue of Friendzone. 
These are great. Yeah. You should work for Konami. <laughs> yeah, I should. I got I got ideas. Uh, no, they're p- too busy licensing Contra to vampire survivors. Oh. Isn't that crazy? All right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, anyway, back to the website. I was just uh, deleting things that were of no real use anymore. And that also included, I must say, uh, because we already covered this in an episode, I did sort of surreptitiously unpublish the TGS commentary article from our friend Andrew Vestal because it was oh yes it was still like a sore spot for me I guess I don't know I don't remember but I was just like yeah a sore spot internally anyway so it's just like we don't need a reminder of this but you know obviously I grew up a little bit more after that and I put it back as you've heard on the show already so whatever this very show but that was the idea nonetheless it's just to like clean up the whole website and uh, just make it look a bit more fresh and so uh I also uh, adopted sort of a peach pink color scheme. I don't know. I kind of, I kind of like uh, using pink a lot in in design. And for some reason, I thought it would like a statement. If Crunk Games was pink, I don't know what kind of statement exactly, but uh, it was different, I suppose. And it means uh, we like the venerable Sakura Japanese cherry blossom. <laughs> oh, there you go. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, you said it perfectly. I have nothing to add. <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah, it's it's a weeb color. Yeah, I guess so. And yeah, I guess. Uh, and I use like I still kept like the star motif because we had that from our old logo and stuff. So I kept the stars around. And so, you know, there's like that. Uh, there's like that line, that header bar at the very top of the page, and it looks, you know, a series of stars. Maybe that's like our that's our Sakura. Those are our Sakura blossoms, Des. I, we can say it, but I was saying Sakura as a joke. It's We can say no, Sakura. I'm just, I'm, I'm just doing the bit. Okay. All right. Yeah, lean into it. You're the one who said we're weebs. You want to do that? Fine. Fine. I'll That's do it. A, all right. That's what we're covering most of the time anyway on this stupid website. I like, yeah, but I, I like to think we have some self-awareness. Oh. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um... So that was at the beginning of 2006. That was literally like our third anniversary because I published a post on January 27th, which was our original launch day, and just said like, hey, look, I redid the website. I don't know why I wrote like one, two, three, four, five, six, nine paragraphs about it, but I did. <laughs> just sort of reintroducing the website to people, whatever. It wasn't going to work out much longer anyway. But soon after that in 2006... I got an offer and was then hired to be an intern at oneup.com, which meant I would be moving to San Francisco to do that stuff. And um, that was incredibly crazy at the time. Just felt like really lucky. Like finally this was like, you know, I, I, I struggle to say dream job, but it was the closest possible thing to that phrasing. So like, yeah, this was kind of my, my ticket out of this hellhole. I always imagine you kind of dancing through, like you get to San Francisco and you basically are enacting the intro to the Mary Tyler Moore show where you're, you know, Ray's new life in the big city <laughs> and you're all excited for it. And then you throw your hat up in the air. I wish. Uh, I ended up oh. hating San Francisco pretty much. It was uh, oh. completely not what I expected, but I think I'll go into more detail on that later. But anyway, I think, uh, like I mentioned, I think in previous episodes here, I I wonder if I may have had a Resident Evil 4 strategy guide article to thank for being uh, thought of for a cheats intern position at 1UP because uh, they were starting a new offshoot website called My Cheats, which was like going to be their version of Game Facts, but they would also have like a wiki strategy guide section. And they wanted some extra interns to help fill that out. And I was going to be one of those, one of those three guys. And so, yeah, I was taking it on and uh, yes, it was a paid internship. Uh, That was not as common back then, but thank God I I did get a salary for that. Yeah. Wow. Paid internship. Yeah. In the industry of video game writing. Well, it's even like, yeah, today it's completely not non-existent but internships in general these days i think especially with like a tech company out here 
they're, you know, they're assumed to be paid. Uh, that was maybe not the case back then is what I'm saying. Uh, certainly not in video game media. I mean, nothing, <laughs> nothing yeah. exists. Nothing good exists in video game media anymore, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, still kind of a fluke even, even back then. Um, so that uh, happened. I moved in. I landed, moved in on April 3rd. No, April 1, 2006. So April Fool's Day, I think. I go back. Anyway, what, uh, nevertheless, early April, first few days of April, I moved to San Francisco to do that. Just before that, though, I was finishing my community college once and for all. I busted out of community college uh, unfinished. So I don't mean to say finished in the sense that I was going to get a degree. I mean, finished in the sense that I'm done emotionally with it. And so I uh, busted out of there uh, with my first ever F in elementary algebra one. And oh my God. I was ready to say, great, fuck off. I'm out of here. <laughs> Outstanding. Yeah. I do remember that algebra class just like, well, I, I've I've characterized this before, where it was like I wish I had just front loaded the stuff I didn't want to do first, and then I would have left the st- you know the electives and things I did want to do at the end, and maybe I would have enjoyed myself slightly better, but I didn't. I saved all the bad stuff I didn't want to do for the end, like a typical sort of petulant child who doesn't <laughs> who just <laughs> uh, procrastinates until they finally have to do it, and yeah, I just was not committed, not really listening. And not really uh, trying to do well in it. And uh, I think that's proven in the grade I got. <laughs> F plus. How about you, Alex? Just, just really quickly. Uh, where were you at Hi. in early 2006? Uh, early 2006, I was beginning my... No, yeah, I was, I was in the middle of my last year of college. Right, so January off April. campus. Is what I was talking about. Yeah. So your last, uh, what do you, what do yeah. you have there? Quarters, semesters, trimesters? Uh, so for fuck, I think, yeah. Oh, you use trimesters oh, for boy. some reason. And I at think. the end, a baby. Yes. Uh, and it was me, uh, being birthed <laughs> into the workforce. <laughs> sort of. Um, okay. Yeah. Goo goo gaga employment, please. Yeah. Yeah, I was a uh, January because I think I graduated in in June of that year. So yeah, January to April, I was just uh, hunkering down, trying to finish the last few classes I needed. Fortunately, slash unfortunately, because uh, it was the end of my college experience, it meant that I only needed a few more classes to graduate, which meant my my course load for that semester was actually very small. Okay, yeah, that was like me at the end of this college recently, and. Yeah, it's great, right? That last the last semester, you're like, oh, this is this is a little less stressful than the first, you know, dozen. Right um, now, that, but that that uh, was counteracted by the stress of, oh, I need to look for a job once I graduate, and that's I, I, I think at the time I was applying to Jet and Nova and ECC and did get an interview with Jet, which uh, who ultimately denied me. Um, got got hired almost immediately by Nova. Uh-huh. Um, and then got got a call back from ECC like the week before I left for Japan to work for Nova that was like, hey, we'd like to interview you. And I'm like, too late. What are oh, you doing? Uh, yeah. Boy, it's funny how that still happens today to thousands of people now. <laughs> yeah. You get ghosted for eight months and then they want to interview. Oh, great. Yeah. Thanks, Dick. That's fun. Uh, yeah, so I was, uh, I was, I was, my headspace was I was wrapping up my life in America, preparing to go to Japan, which yeah. meant a lot of things. It meant physically moving all my shit over to Japan, and it also meant uh, emotionally preparing because you know Lauren couldn't come with me. Right, uh, we were trying to think of a way she could come with me, but uh, she at the time had not gone to college, and you can't really get a teaching job in Japan without a college degree, so. I was preparing to leave. Like I think in the back of my head, I knew it was not going to continue once I left because there's no way to get her over there. Right. Yeah. And uh, I yeah, mean, yeah, that's, that's she was a, just too young and did have to go to college. And it's not like she can just apply to a college in Japan or anything. Yeah. In her situation. Yeah. And I, I think I think we lasted about six months after I got over there, but that's that's neither here nor there. Uh, at this point in time, yeah, I was uh, my head was a jumble. I was trying to just get myself ready yeah. to go. Yeah. 
And for me, yeah, Fun. I was like happy to get into one up like for realsies. But uh, yeah, this quote unquote dream was not quite what I imagined. But I think we'll uh, save that. Well, I'll just say it right now. We might just do an epilogue episode after this where we talk in full about those sorts of things and sort of our career sure. after all of this. But I'm going to save that for when it's time. Um, let's go back to Crunk Games, though. 2006, like I said, kind of nothing, but I still uh, was putting up a little bit of content as a treat, you might say. Once I had moved to San Francisco, uh, we had the release of the new version of a game called Boku no Natsuyasumi that was on PSP that had come out in the summer of 06. And so, That's I mean... That's right. That was uh, Boku Natsu 2 colon Summer Lovin'? No, it was Boku Natsu 1. The oh, remix. Right. Yeah, they, I, forgot, I forgot they ported 1 to the PSP. <laughs> yes. Literally, volumes 1, 2, and 4 of Boku no Natsuyasumi. <laughs> Or You're on PSP. Right. You, can't, you can't fit Hokkaido on a handheld. <laughs> no, as it turned it's a out. big island. Uh, not even the Vita was good enough to... No. Oh, boy. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that came out in 2006, and I was living in San Francisco in Jeremy Parrish's apartment. And wow. I, like, I... Where else was I going to post anything about Boku no Nuts, you asked me, except crunkgames.com at that point. So I went ahead and... Posted a uh, preview and review of those, I believe. Yes. Anyway, I also, even during working at 1UP, like those first few months, I even managed to post like one of our profile articles. So retro game articles at the time or slightly older games. And so I did a write-up on Phantom Crash for the Xbox and uh, a, f- a fun game I just sort of fell in love with just like by happenstance and introduced myself and by extension Alex to like two Two or three Japanese bands from that. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I was going to say that's got game's got a great soundtrack. Yeah, um, and that was yeah, that was just written during my downtime at One Up, and it turned out to be the last non Bokunatsu related like game coverage article on CrunkGames.com. So uh, couldn't have gone out a better way, I would say. Phantom Crash and Bokunatsu, two great tastes. They go great together in my brain. All uh, right. <laughs> And uh, even Alex found time to post some things on crunkgames.com. One of them posted right as I was arriving in San Francisco. I love that the the way you deliver that is like we're watching a 1940s newsreel about the war and there's black and white footage of me <laughs> writing a thing about Dragon Quest and then yeah. the, the voiceover is like, even little Alex is helping out with the effort. <laughs> yes. uh, what did I write around that time? I don't remember. Uh, well, let me back up a bit. So... On January 27th, I posted the article about the site being redesigned and then also a review of Bokura no Kazuku. So oh, yeah. again, anything Bokunatsu related was going on Crunk Games. And so I wrote that. That game's not that great, but I had to cover it because of duties to myself. And then on March 27th, Alex wrote a review, I suppose, of Karnov the movie. Oh, right. This is still on the That's website. Right. <laughs> That's right. I went, to the, I went to the premiere in Pittsburgh. Because right. the director, um, the director Adam Taylor, is friends with my brother. Um, I think more closely friends with my sister-in-law's brother. Basically, <laughs> okay. that's a leap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, no, he's. I mean, they're, because they, they like my brother, his wife, her brother, and Adam. I believe all went to high school together. Is what I'm saying. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and he um, really loved Karnov. He really loved Karnov, and he's a filmmaker. Um, and so he cast his dad as Karnov. <laughs> I'm going to talk all about this. Uh, J- Jason Ariola has a podcast about video game movies that I have been on before to talk about uh, Dragon Quest, your story. Uh, and I've been invited on to talk about Karnov. But here's a sneak preview of that. The guy who played Karnov was Adam's father, who I believe is a Polish immigrant who didn't speak a lot of English. <laughs> oh, okay. But was just game to wow. do whatever. And, the and role he was this. born to play. That's right. Wow. Um, and it was, yeah. And it's not very long. I mean, it's, it's a very short, it's not a feature length film. It's, uh, and this is, um, you know, pre YouTube, I believe. So, like, this oh, kind yeah. of content, you didn't see this kind of content very often. So, I thought it was very cool. No, I would um, definitely say, like, looking at the screenshots, because that's all I have to go on, is like, it's a lot of, budget. 
well, not <laughs> not not just that, but the fact that oh. it's a lot of like NES parody stuff, which yes, there's a lot wasn't of really being put on video until YouTube yeah. really took off. So yes, in some ways, this, uh, this is an interesting like historical like <laughs> predecessor to all yeah. that stuff. Because this now that kind of thing has been done to death. Yeah, but like. Not just done to death, but like done to death with incredible budgets and production value. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh-huh. like, so just to, to have this kind of thing uh, in 2006, 2007, uh, I thought was pretty cool. Um, the premiere was at a, uh, a I, guess it, I guess it would be called a barcade uh, in right. Pittsburgh called Games and At. Uh, and At, and at being uh, Pittsburghese for et cetera. Yeah, right. Sort of like in um, it. Mate? Uh, yeah, kind of. Th- uh, thanks, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Governor? Mate um, means friend, Alex. Th- <laughs> rail means rail. <laughs> uh, I went to this thing, and it's it's you know it's not a giant venue. It's a pretty small place, and it was, it was just very it was very cozy though. Uh, I remember it was the first and only time I've played an actual Street Fighter One machine, which was pretty fun. Oh, with uh, the fun big pads or normal buttons? Uh, I think normal buttons. Yeah. All right. Yeah, not that there was a um, lot of yeah, the big was, pad buttons. But it, yeah, it was uh, it was mostly classics and pinball and stuff. I believe that place has since closed down. Games and that I, think I can it imagine years ago, maybe, maybe even pre-pandemic. I think it's almost twenty years. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Paving yeah, the um, way for new barcades to open and close within several years. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the word barcade. I've never described Critical Hit that no. way. I I feel like it's a very reductive. Uh, way to describe what the establishment is because right. I, like, I feel like a barcade implies you're a bar and an arcade Right. what well, bar- about my establishment is arcade I don't have any arcade machines no, I, no. I ain't got no fucking Q-Bert like, I have had I've, I've, I've had very disappointed tourists okay. come in look around see there's no arcade machines and then leave like I don't know what you want I don't know who keeps telling people it's a barcade yeah <laughs> Well, it's funny because Barcade became the, the, the name of the, uh, let's say, genre of <laughs> shop. But it was actually the name of a chain. I think they started in Canada or something. It was called Barcade. Oh, okay. And you would sure. go to Barcade. Not a Barcade, but Barcade to play things. And uh, I see. I guess, you know, it was just such a catchy enough slang term for it that people just adopted it when they started making more of them across the nation, <laughs> this great nation. So, wow. Yeah. So I wrote that. Okay. Yeah. You wrote it. And <laughs> uh, with some professionalism, I'd say. What? Why? I just want to read this little bit beginning of oh, a paragraph here. Okay. Because despite its brevity, the DVD is recommended for the impressive extras that accompany the main feature. That's all. That just struck me as like, Oh, <laughs> Oh, You're- did I mention what those were? Oh yes, of course. Including a rather in-depth making of video, running commentary, and a host of hidden mini games and features accessible through hidden men- menus. Menus, semicolon, a walkthrough for these hidden puzzles is available for the less adventurous. He also included an NES emulator and the Karnov ROM on the disc. I have to assume that's done entirely illegally. <laughs> that is pretty ballsy, I gotta say. That's like... Uh, yeah. Almost kind of limiting in a way, like uh, you almost don't have a lot of faith in your movie getting bigger than your circle of friends, maybe, to actually go ahead and like put, yeah, copyright infringing material on there. I don't know. Oh, yeah. No, I don't. I, don't, I certainly think that's not all this was use. intended to be. Okay. Yeah. Just a goof. Yeah. All right. That's fine. I'm just saying. It's it certainly, you know, by virtue of you writing about it, you certainly have one of the only records of it on the internet, I would say. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Um, you yeah, also so linked. Was, was, you linked to huh. the st- uh, store, I suppose, that sold uh, the movie online, and now it just goes to a four hundred four page uh, with a Chinese title bar. So. Um, oh. Oh no. Uh, let's not try and find out what the rest of that website is. But yeah. 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 I guess back, like back then, we like you know Adam had not even stopped to consider that there would be copyright issues. You know, mm-hmm. with putting an emulator and a ROM, more so the ROM, uh, on a disc that you are selling for money. 
Uh, I, I, I want to like, know which emulator. <laughs> uh, I mean, two thousand six ish. What do you think? Well, there's, I just, there's I just several assume different the, options. Yeah. I just assume that the, the default is Nesticle for everybody still at that point. I suppose, or INS, or INS. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. But yeah, that was uh, the first thing you wrote in 2006 for the website. The second, uh, like I said, published on April 1st. So I was literally like in a plane to San Francisco, I think, uh, was uh, your humor article, A Completely Factual (laughs) History of Dragon Quest. That's right. I remember that. Do you remember it? Because I'm not sure what you were going for. What do you mean? Um, I think it was just meant to be absurd. Oh, it's April 1st, of course. So you're doing an April Fool's Day article, right? Yeah, I was just trying to be goofy. Trying to be goofy, yeah. I mean, it, it is also, it's a goof, it's a specific kind of goof. It's it's a snapshot of 2006 goof, kind also, of yeah. bef- before. I feel like as the internet became a larger part of everyone's lives, as, and especially post-smartphone, the idea of humor and the way that we approach humor has changed drastically. Right. It's generational. Yeah. Um, But that article in particular is very much before that cutoff. I feel like it's, it's very, that might be the cutoff for like my high school sense of humor. Like what I thought was funny in high school and college. I think that if I could point to something in my life and be like, that's where I started. That was the end of me going for that kind of vibe. Yeah. All the time. I think it was that. That's a really good point because I always felt the same way, like being 22, 23. Like, I feel like I really didn't shake off most of my, you know, teenage horseshit until like 29. (laughs) You know what I mean? And so 22, 23, even though I am technically an adult and about to move to San Francisco for a job, it's like, I am still really immature about a lot of things. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Just, just, well, generally just not a great sense of humor, but I think we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, Oh yeah. But yeah, you wrote this uh, fairly long article, uh, at least for you, (laughs) not to, not to. There's two pages. Yeah. Yeah. And like again, all humorous, and so uh, it was like uh, it was like something you could have wrote for a book, you know, like David Sedaris' collection s- of stories. <laughs> I was just about to say it. Um, it almost sounds like something I would have submitted to Game Players Magazine. Okay, yeah. <laughs> like you know, here's here's my idea for a, a silly Dragon Quest April Fools article because it was it was that kind of absurd. It was very just bonkers, yeah. silly. Yeah, that works. <laughs> I love it. Oh, boy. <sighs> okay. So that's pretty much all that we did in 2006. Uh, that and uh, Phantom Crash and then Bokanatsu Portable. Uh, we move on straight on to 2007. And here's where I find basically the next real purpose to still have crunkgames.com up. <laughs> What happened was uh, shortly after joining one up, so really about May or June of 2006, I f- get turned on to what will become my next obsession, which is Game Center CX, the television show from Japan. And so I get this bug in my brain that I should, not unlike how I had made a giant walkthrough thing for the Toroto Nagari Boshi game and done up a lot of stuff in general about Bokunatsu games. I should just start an episode guide for this TV show on the website. And so I was working on that again during my downtime at 1UP throughout 2006, downloading the episodes and then put up the first, you know, the initial version of the episode guide on on Crunk Games on April April 10th, 2007. So almost a year (laughs) after all that, after moving to San Francisco and stuff. Yeah, I found out about it, I think, on Kotaku. So it was Brian Ashcraft who wrote a little thing about it. And that's how I was interested in it. And then would start to download and find uh, the actual episodes through the Japanese file sharing underground until I had an episode guide going. Now, the thing is, uh, Game Center CX started in 2003. Of course, I'm finding it and writing about it in 2006 and 2007. 
I could have actually learned about it when it started in 2003 because I had a lot of issues of the Japanese game magazine continue. I had like issues one, two, and like four and five, let's say. I don't remember the exact numbers, but like issue three, let's say, had a <laughs> had a piece on Game Center CX. And that's the only one I missed for like years and years until I finally acquired it like years later. <laughs> And saw, oh, here it is, the thing about Game Center CX. Jesus, if only I had seen that. <laughs> Maybe I could have found out about it earlier and got this ball rolling a little earlier and could have had something even cooler to have on Crunk Games a little earlier. But it didn't work out that way. Because at this point, the show had already been going for like three or four years, Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. It was in, I think, the technical season six. <laughs> Wow. Not very many episodes in those initial seasons, of course, but um, now they're yeah. up to like what? Almost season 30. Oh yeah. my God. And so, yeah, that was my way to fully introduce that show to people because I don't think a little Kotaku article was going to last very long. And so I made that as sort of the home base for anyone who would be interested in this TV show because as far as I knew, I was the only white guy I, <laughs> in America who had heard of it and uh, might as well do what I had done previously with stuff like Bokunatsu and just uh, make the, the, the resource for it. Yeah. And you did. I sure did. To the extent that uh, we just got an email yesterday. <laughs> yes. That's right. <laughs> from somebody. <laughs> yeah, you explain this. <laughs> okay. Well, it's not much to explain. <laughs> Someone wrote to our Crunk Games emails asking to find one of the very early episodes uh, because no one else had seemed to kept it around. And they were, this person was representing the Metroid community. So the Metroid database fan site. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that early episode about Nintendo had an interview with uh, Sakamoto, you know, the main guy behind Metroid and everything. And they were looking for a copy of that, and they couldn't find it. And so I still happen to have my old raw version of it, and I had uploaded that on the Internet Archive. And, you know, they write this long email like, I don't know if this email works, but hey, if you could just, if you have, an, <laughs> uh, if you have any kind of lead on that episode, it'd be really great. You'd really be helping us out. And I was just like, yeah, here it is. Take care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. And it's always nice to make someone's day. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> now, of course, I did make sure to make this episode guide just an episode guide and didn't really tell anybody how to find the episodes or anything. But um, I was mostly using uh, the app Share, which was uh, kind of called the Japanese Napster. And so it was a similar sort of file okay. sharing service. I think the guy who made it had uh, also just taken after Napster. Uh, ended up uh, jailed. I think he's still in jail. Ooh. <laughs> oh my god japan did not like that guy um no i think they made a movie about it even uh, what yeah I don't, well now i want to pirate it <laughs> you're right <laughs> <laughs> um the the successor to share was called perfect dark <laughs> yes i'm not kidding and so i also now, wait, wait, is it episode. Sorry, is it S H A R E or C H E R? No, the S H, the S H one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I guess that makes sense too. Yeah, very straightforward names there. And so I would get yeah. episodes uh, from there. And so my process, once the episode guide was started, and I kept going because I had gone until like 2012, so I was still updating Crunk <laughs> Games for like six more years, uh, five or six more years. So my process was. I would keep up with the new episodes by getting them as soon as they appeared. And that would probably be by Friday or so. I would then spend Saturday and or Sunday watching the episode, taking brief notes uh, that would end up as what was written in the episode guide, taking screenshots every so often because I needed a lot of screenshots of all the episodes and do that. And probably the next day on Sunday was me just putting it all into the giant HTML chunk that would be updated on our website into, into WordPress. And so I would literally spend several years just wasting my Saturday <laughs> doing this kind of uh, work to document Game Center CX episodes. 
And eventually I would start making like little, little excuses to treat myself. Like I would uh, get up on Saturday, go walk over to the Walgreens, get myself a nice bag of snacks, and then just plop down in front of the TV and start writing up. That does games sound nice. Snacks. Yes. <laughs> you know, I've no- relatedly, I've noticed that I watch more Netflix when I have snacks in the house. Okay. And I eat more snacks when I watch Netflix. There okay. seems to be a correlation. Okay. <laughs> Probably. Yes. Anyway. Uh, are you do, you? do you always get popcorn at the movie theater? I mean, I yes. know you, you know have what? gone to the movie theater just to buy popcorn and then leave. I was but about I mean, to say yes. I do that. I do that when I visit my wife at work because she works in a building. <laughs> she works on the third floor, and there's a movie theater on the fifth floor. So I'll drop into her workplace and I'll give her some snacks. I'll give her some contraband so that she can enjoy on her break. Right. And then I will mosey on up to the fifth floor and just get a bucket of popcorn. And and fortunately, this movie theater uh, has, it's just one wall is just windows. It's just like floor to ceiling, gigantic windows that look out over Nagoya Station and yeah. the whole main drag. And so I can just sit there, people watch and eat my popcorn and then leave full wow. of salt and butter. Imagine if you had incorporated writing about Game Center CX episodes. You could take on the torch Maybe I for will. me. Yeah. All right. Okay. No, but what I was meaning to ask you was, have you always been that person who gets popcorn at the movies? Um, yo. Sorry, I don't mean to say of yes I, and no. <laughs> and by the way, I don't mean to phrase it like that person who always gets popcorn. I know it's a very <laughs> oh, common you that thing. Guy? It's part of the oh, fucking culture. Are you the culture. kind of guy who enjoys a delicious <laughs> no, snack? I understand it's the cultural <laughs> thing. I just meant <laughs> some people don't always get popcorn like me. And some people do always make sure to get popcorn. Are you more on that side? There is, um, there was a change in my life. I used to be a candy guy when I was a kid. Oh. It was always Mike and Ike's or yeah. Milk Duds. Yeah, th- those are my favorites, Mike and Ike's Milk Duds. Uh, and then once I hit middle school, I started getting awful cavities in my teeth. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I realized that maybe sugar's not my friend, so I switched to popcorn. Okay, yeah. Well, then you get the kernel stuck in your teeth, and then you got another problem. I guess. So you floss. I, that, that's when I started always bringing floss with me, which everyone should do. Everyone over the age of one should carry floss with them at all times. All right. I'll let my son know. Good. <laughs> my son was famously hard to brush his teeth with. Like <laughs> That's fine. They make kid floss. It's got uh, designs on the floss. Get him some of that. I don't think they do. No, they're too tiny. <laughs> be too small. Exactly. No, no. It's a lot to do that. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that was my <laughs> process for doing Games Air CX episodes. And so I would just do that essentially every, was it every two weeks or wh- whenever they would have a new episode ready? Because, of course, I was always tracking the news and see when they would be done for the season or when the new season was going to come up and all that stuff. Uh, and that, of course, also included. Completely documenting the 24-hour special. Oh, yeah. In 2009. And so okay. that was, first of all, it was insane that I was even able to catch someone's like contraband live stream of it. Like they were just recording the TV as it was going on. And I caught that on Justin.tv before Justin decided oh, to wow. just make a Twitch. That's uh, right. When Back when live streaming was just a twinkle in uh, Ninja's eye. Perfect. And so, yeah, I managed to uh, document that entire thing. Stayed up the entire time from like 7.30 in the morning to 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> wow. That's watching, okay. Watching Arino play Lemmings on Super Nintendo. Oh my um, God. Did you, what time did you wake up? Uh, earlier than that. <laughs> oh. Here was a thing too. Uh, they were accepting faxes and oh. I made sure to, well, of course I had to sacrifice watching some of the show, but I bust my ass down to the one up office where there was, you know, the easiest place I could find a fax machine, uh, and send my doodled up fax to them. And, uh, they didn't feature it on camera or anything, but you could see it in the background. Yeah. Oh, nice. Cool. It was still kind of a novel thing for them, I think, to have any kind of foreign fan presence. And so I think that they didn't actually want to like mention it oh. or acknowledge it in any way. Yeah. What did you write? It was a doodle of Arino as Little Mac because I thought he was going to yeah. play Punch Out again. Punch Out series had just gone on. He wasn't doing too hot on that. So I had drawn this up ahead of time and I thought it was going to be a Punch Out thing. 
Nevertheless, it's still a reference to the previous episode. Okay. Then I just uh, wrote, I think, uh, Gambare Arno Cacho or something, and then wrote from USA at the bottom. And that was probably enough for wow. them to go, oh, cool. oh I uh, maybe not. <laughs> See, I, I don't know. I From their point of view, I would think... I think they're cagey about it. I would think it was either, they'd think it was either a gag or someone named Usa. No. <laughs> <laughs> Give them a little because more I credit. Because I know that... I wrote the periods in between the letters, USA. Oh, okay. All right. I okay. made sure. I made sure yeah, to do my due but like, But, th- I mean, think about it from their point of view. How would somebody be watching this outside of Japan? Yes. Well, no, I know exactly. But it's the fact that, well, logically it would be, well, they must not be watching this legally, right? And so, well, let's not acknowledge the fact that someone might be watching this illegally. <laughs> I don't think the piracy thing even crossed their minds. Right. It could be any old reason, but the result is that they did not take any time on camera to talk about it or be surprised about it in any way. It was just, okay. I sent the facts and then, you know, an hour later I saw it in the background of a shot and because <laughs> they had a wall of the faxes that people were doing. It's just like, well, at least they got it. <laughs> yeah. But gee, I thought my special little boy presence there would have, netted some airtime, but I guess not. Of course, I made up for that <laughs> quite well. Oh, of course. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Later, when they actually went to America and I showed up on the show. Payback, no, not really, but uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Starring Mel Gibson. But anyway, I made a separate article for the 24-hour special just because it was a giant thing and it was just going to make the giant episode guide post even bigger. But I also made sure to even send an email to Mike Daly, who was like one of the co-creators of Lemmings, you know, this nice Scottish man, to just tell him like, hey, I'm writing this thing. Your game was featured on Japanese TV for 24 hours. This guy tried to beat it. What do you think about that? Whoa. It was just a little little tiny interview thing, a bonus at the end of the article. Still probably, I would think, uh, yeah, I think that's the only developer interview that we did on Crunk Games. <laughs> wow, yeah, that's true. It's me interviewing or asking, emailing Mike Daly some questions related to Game Center CX and Lemmings. So wow. that was still that was really special, though. That was still really special. And um because before that they had done like an eight-hour live special for the Quest of Kai. And nobody was stream recording that because that was a few years before this was viable. But I had nevertheless downloaded the recordings of that. And that was still exciting, even though I did have to write up all eight hours of, I gotta say, uh, a very frustrating <laughs> challenge for him. Cause that game yeah. is so repetitive and has uh, exactly one music track. It's a fun game, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's one of those challenges that when it comes up on the Twitch channel, I will just, I'll load up Salty Bit for a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, uh, Cacho, I love you, but I do not love this game. It's yeah. It's not his fault. The game is good, but yeah, you you do you, you have to uh, take that on in private. <laughs> Let's say yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was that's kind of what was going on with the Game Center CX stuff. Um, I mean, the thing was that it was all I kind of had as far as Crunk Games related content because by 2007, I think that video games aren't really that much in what I would call my Crunk bubble anymore. Because yeah. in 2003 and four, we started out with like a huge, huge, tremendous wealth of like crazy or just generally interesting Japanese games coming out. Mostly on PS2, of course, but also really good stuff on the other systems, especially Game Boy and GameCube. And that wasn't necessarily drying up by 2006 and seven, but it was changing in ways that were going to result in sort of a drying up. And so the Japanese industry at that time was basically having a rough time making games on anything that wasn't the DS or the Wii. Uh, but oh yeah, the DS in Japan is like even harder to keep up with than the PS2 was because everybody started rushing to make all sorts of like uh, what we pejoratively called non-games, but they are things that are like not proper video games it's like productivity apps and software and like guidance things and like adaptations of like self-help books and all the different brain age type of things uh 
cooking <laughs> recipe books, language guides, all of this stuff, just hitting the DS like month after month after month. And as someone who's was still, and you know, is still inter- very interested in that crazy Japanese stuff coming out, it was a really bad signal to noise ratio. And as far as like keeping track of that for crunk games, even ideally, if I was still like, living at home and just updating crunk games by myself, it would be so hard, I think, to really keep up with just the wave of stuff coming out on just DS. And it was just Yeah, um, I And there I was and the, because of that, again, you had a lot of these games that were not necessarily games, just sort of crowding out stuff that would have been really interesting, you know, a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah. The DS uh, had a I lot of great I'll, games, but not nothing really cool enough, I think. Yeah, I think a, a lot of the the quote unquote non game stuff on the DS, and, and in some ways, the DS itself was very much a sort of a precursor to the smartphone in the sense that, like, yeah, oh, yeah. all of that wacky shit would just be an app now. Yeah. Um, but before then, you know, we didn't know that was coming. Nintendo was trying to sell this device that's like, look, you can touch it. It has a stylus. You can do all kinds of cool touch stuff with it. Mm-hmm. And a you lot of cool stuff sideways. was... You turn it sideways. You play it's a book now. Dusk. It's, it's, a it's a book. book. It's, it's a book. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a lot, yeah, there's a lot of cool games on there because of that. But also, there's also, you know, there's, yeah, just a lot of nothing. <laughs> yeah, a lot um, of like because, stuff that because, right now, you know, today yeah. is junk. Just pure junk. Yeah. Like outdated, not relevant, just junk. Yeah. Brain Age is still good, but that's Nintendo. They do good stuff. Oh, is it two words? I've been saying Brenage. Oh, boy. Oh, you're not even right. French. Come on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I do want to say, though, like, I, I've, I did always kind of admire your zeal for Japanese games in, like, 2003, 2004, because... Well, thank you. I think at the time, both of our Japanese levels were just above zero. <laughs> um, I got news I for you, we, Alex. <laughs> what? What's still, up? I'm still at... <laughs> I'm still at two. What? <laughs> you know a couple kanji now. Oh boy, yeah. Okay, the kanji for release date. <laughs> <laughs> Hatsubai he Hatsubai B. Hatsubai B. Yeah. All right. It's it's B. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's B. I because I, I remember um, when I yeah, went to get my, my COVID. <laughs> but sorry, go man. Uh, when I when I went to get my first COVID vaccine. Um, I was look. I was filling out the form, and the 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 fields for re, uh, desired date of vaccination in Japanese is kibobi, and I I didn't I didn't know that the he became b, so I read it out loud as kibo kibohi I think, and my wife corrected me as kibobi, and I thought that was just the most Alex word you could say out loud in a goofy voice, right, and yes. I proceeded to to say kibobi, yeah. proceeded to just say it out loud around the house for about the next week. That's the Canadian eBay, right? Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, keep hoping. Yeah. That's, uh, that's that guy, Trey Luke Skywalker, right? <laughs> <laughs> he, he's on, uh, Disney Plus. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, what the fuck was that? You oh, yeah. were complimenting so, me on my zeal for Japanese summer. And your hair. Okay, thank you. Um, so, yeah, we both had Hiragana and Katakana under our belts, like every nerd does who's into video sure. games. Um, but, like, I did not have the desire or drive to import all of these PS2 games that you were and muddling through them just because they had interesting concepts. Like that was beyond me. Yeah. I was waiting. I was waiting for my JRPGs to get translated into English by other people. Sometimes I was importing games, but maybe yeah. not eh, some RPGs, but not a whole lot of text heavy stuff. But well, I was always kind of impressed that you were just diving in head first and importing all this crazy stuff that we had, you know, we just could not read. <laughs> well, let's not make it sound too impressive because let me remind everybody, I was still pretty poor in 2001 to 2004 and such and couldn't afford a lot of games. And even when I did start getting freelance work, like I still couldn't like go all out on buying a bunch of new games, especially with import markup and all that. But a lot of what came from the coverage on Crunk Games initially was me just going to Famitsu.com or Game Watch, these other news sites that were actually on top of things and getting the information from the companies on the new games coming out. And they would write little preview articles. And I would look at those and say, 
oh, that game looks cool. Or, hey, I'll judge a book by this cover, let's say, and look at this preview article. And, oh, yeah, I guess that game is cool. Oh, it's actually part of this long-running series? I guess so. Oh, yeah, all right, yeah, long. I, I like the idea of this. Why not? Let's make a little preview article for it and transpose all of that onto Crunk Games with basically Babblefish translations and some of my own elbow grease into that and try and uh, <laughs> figure out what this game is about and uh, see if I can nonetheless communicate to the readers of Crunk Games, all five of them, why I think this is interesting, why I, in no uncertain terms, found this article interesting and why I think you would find it interesting. And that was basically it. Now, when I did start getting money for myself again, yes, that was when I would start uh, to buy more things like the Toro games, for example, and obviously anything Bokunatsu related, but still not a lot. Like, uh, and not a lot of stuff that I ended up covering on Crunk Games as far as imports go. Because a lot of the cool stuff was coming out here anyway. Like big, uh, I'm thinking, uh, well, for example, Nightmare of Draga, which I had covered on GameSpy and whatever. And I was like, oh, this is actually coming out in English? Great, okay. So I don't have to buy it in Japanese or anything. I can just write about it for Crunk Games. And, and you know, all the big Nintendo games, of course. Um, but not not like not like an every week sort of thing, because I didn't really have the budget for it. But uh, I would have loved to, trust me. I, <laughs> if I had the money for it, I would be trying out all those games and definitely giving real hands-on coverage of it. But uh, I just was doing what I could. And yeah, like I said, it was all about just being interested in that stuff and still quite interested in it. Because now I got to catch up on all these games that I wrote about but didn't uh, actually end up buying or playing, like Kofuku Sosakon for PS2. Oh, that, that <laughs> sounds like a, a, could be a fun stream theme for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, sort of. That's what I kind of wanted to do when I was originally starting to live stream a couple years ago. I was like, I got like this backlog of Japanese games, PS2 games specifically. Most of them <laughs> was stuff that I wrote about. It's like, boy, it'd be ni nice to finally try those out. Uh, but, you know, life got in the way. How about this for a title? How about Backlog to the Future? How about Back to the Log? <laughs> Okay, that's a good start. Yeah, sure. I mean, <laughs> is it? Uh, well, it's not the worst, but it's not the best. <laughs> uh, it's like all, oh my God, it's like every magazine or website that did a feature article on Japanese games and always, always without fail, just decided to just call it big in Japan because yeah. they couldn't come up with anything else. And 1UP was also guilty of this as late as I think 2009 or 10 or something. <laughs> They just had like a the, cover story and just called it Big in Japan. What about Ninky Kids? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I barely get it, but okay. All right. Hey, barely counts. Are you referring to hey, Ninja I'm Kids? barely a Suikoden speedrunner. Mm. Yeah. Or Kinky Kids, the band? <laughs> it was a kinky. kinky yeah, it was kid. kinky plus the word ninky, which means popular. Right. My dumb retro game addled brain went to the Ninja Kids, the arcade game. Never mind. Oh wow! Whatever. I don't. Right? I don't believe that they should be drafting children. No, I don't either. Uh, I All think right. they were puppets, though, so it's okay. What? They were like Karakuri puppets or something. Oh, like okay, mechanical dolls. Karakuri, not like, not like, pol not like political, not like a puppet regime. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, Karakuri. Got a little off track there. I get, my larger point was that uh, yeah, there there was turmoil in the Japanese game space, and so it would have dried up and not made crunk games that interesting anyway, even if I had kept yeah. going with it. Um, Cause again, the DS and Wii were kind of getting choked. The PS three was going basically nowhere. Um, and the 360 not fully touched that much by the Japanese game developers. No. Got some good Sakaguchi games out of it, but uh, the Gooch, most other people of note, not so much. I still, yeah, I brought, I remember like a year and a half ago, I brought home lost odyssey and Blue Dragon, and yeah, I got I got ten hours into Lost Odyssey, and I I was enjoying it, and then I had to go back to work, and I lost uh, my oh. my uh, my rhythm. And Odyssey, and Odyssey. That's probably the best of the two, though. Yeah, yeah. Blue Dragon's okay, but um, a bit repetitive. <laughs> Just a bit. You know what's funny though is like I was the way that I bought 
those games because uh, I, I own them. I, I own physical versions. Blue Dra- I have a North American copy of Blue Dragon. Mm-hmm. I have a North American copy of Lost Odyssey. I also have a Japanese copy of Lost Odyssey. All right. Um, could not get any of them to work on any of the two Xboxes that I have. Oh, no. And it turns out the solution was to just go on my phone and go to like games.microsoft.com and buy them both for five bucks. Yeah. Because uh, they were both on sale at the time. <laughs> Somebody works. alerted me to a sale and I'm like, oh, this is much easier than dealing with this. So I just yep. I just bought digital versions and then downloaded them both to the Xbox. Yeah. Easy peasy. There you go. Uh, I, I still love physical media, but... But sometimes a game is five bucks. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like five bucks to make it easier to play. Yeah, I'll yeah, do that. Even exactly. though I already own it, sure. And as I've said before, if you ever get a newer Xbox, you can play Blue Dragon a little bit more smoothly. So yeah. Okay. If you just play it on 360, it has to slow down and it's not great. So I'm kind of surprised those games haven't been remastered uh yet for PC. Uh well, I just I don't think that's just gonna happen. It's not really a possibility anymore. Mist Walker stuff just doesn't it's just, they're always one not? and done. They're always one and done. Yeah, but Miss Walker, like Miss Walker's still around, right? That's still Sakaguchi's company, isn't it? Yeah, but of course they've also had those games made by external developers. Oh, that I didn't know. And I think both of them are gone. <laughs> okay, so it would be re- it would be a monumental, if not impossible, task well, trying to. You could remaster them in the same way that most things are, where you just get an external team like backwards to, like, to reverse engineer it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but and that that I'm sure yeah. in Microsoft's stance, like they've already made these games backwards compatible and slightly improved in terms of how they run, and you can run them in higher resolution and stuff. So there you go. I'm sure that's their idea. And I know. I'm just saying, like yeah. since since I have joined the desktop gaming revolution uh, know, a few yeah. years ago i've just become enamored with how easy it is to play things on steam yep yeah. and how nice it is to just have everything in one location like i'm thinking about buying a steam deck that's how deep wow. in, in i am in this i know you're crazy and i'm just thinking oh i wonder if if sakaguchi has done any research into you know demand for these games on steam because i'm sure there is some demand but we don't know how much it is or or but you know what the cost would be and if it would be worth it to even port them my but I wild, guess not. yeah I, my wild guess is it's not so much sakaguchi it's just microsoft and uh oh we are uh currently talking uh during a week where microsoft just closed a bunch of studios and is getting a whole bunch of shit for it in the court of public opinion and uh people oh, right. are just, pretty much giving up on <laughs> Microsoft doing anything right at this point. And so yeah. it's a combination of that right now where they're just in turmoil and they need to make up the $90 billion they spent. But also I think in terms of the Japanese side of that company, the Xbox branch of the company basically doesn't exist anymore. And the people who might've helped to get those Mistwalker deals probably don't work there anymore. And Nonetheless, I think the whole Japanese market for Microsoft and Xbox is maybe a little bit embarrassing for them, and they don't want to look at these games, these two big JRPGs that they spend a lot of money on to try and enrapture the Japanese public, but then just failed like they always have in that country. Probably isn't something that they want to revisit in any sense. Nonetheless, they these games are available to buy and download, and you can play them, and a lot of people love them. They just probably just don't want to revisit them for, you know, whatever dumb reason they can drum up. But I guess that's why I'm saying you're probably not going to see it that see it too soon. That's also why like Mr. Walker stuff is just kind of one and done. Like last story on Wii is also really awesome. It hasn't shown oh, up. Right. Isn't probably going to show up again, uh, even though it is like Nintendo published. I think it was originally in Japan. Um and uh, Fantasian, which was an Apple Arcade exclusive, there was some rumor, I think, that maybe it showed up on a Steam database. So maybe that might show up on PC someday, but for the time being, like, not yet, not officially. So uh, no one really knows. Miss Walker stuff just doesn't, they just, they're just done after they ship it. <laughs> they don't come back to it. And maybe they're having their own troubles. Maybe Sakaguchi needs to drum up some cash, you know? Scrounge up Could some be. dosh. Maybe he's playing too much FF14. Yeah, that too, probably. <laughs> he loves it. 
got the Alex syndrome. He does. Staying at home all day, not getting off his ass. No, I only play FF14 once or twice a week now. All right. Well, I was including FF11, you know, in your FF11 heyday when you would just. Uh, oh, oh, the heyday. Yeah, it was with a all couch I did. potato. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, in terms of coverage, I think Crunk Games wouldn't really have survived the rest of the 2000s anyway. Uh, no. However, you know, I was doing the Game Center CX guide. Effectively, the site was dead and there wasn't really much going on there. But. One thing that we did decide to do, much in the same way where I was like, you know, this, where else am I going to put this Game Center CX episode guide? We decided to do a podcast for Fantasy Star Online's 10th anniversary, because where else are we going to put this except CrookGames.com? That's right. Uh, and this was, I believe... That was the precursor to Nomo, Wo. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We did two podcasts on Crunk Games, one year apart, and then the year after that started No More Whoppers. And That's right. Yeah. I remember we did the first one in your apartment. Now, the first in, one was in Japan. In my apartment? In, in Freebell? Okay. Yeah. That's Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I remember us recording in my apartment in Freebell. Yeah, that was the first um, one. That was the PSO one. Because That's it was right. and then we did 2010, and I had been on, and this was my second Japan trip, so yeah. That's right! That's where I got the picture of you wearing the Fraser t-shirt that I gave you. Yes. Precisely. All right, awesome. That's a great, <laughs> I gotta print that out and, and put it on my wall. Okay, maybe just, how about a t-shirt of that t-shirt, of that picture? Oh, perfect! Yeah. Oh my god, that's great. And yeah, I, then I remember recording the second one at your place in... Sa- Berlin Ber- Game. Berlin Game, that's it. That was fun. And so, yeah, once again, they're still on the website. Of course, you can go listen to them if you really want to. But my, I think it was my idea to like do a 10th anniversary of Fantasy Star Online because it was, I mean, not played too much by me, but certainly you would put a lot of time into it. And you were also just a Fantasy Star fan in general. And it seemed like an interesting topic just because uh, yes, it was kind of a important game, I think. I think I floated this by you, or maybe I didn't. And if if I did, I'm sure it was shot down. But uh, I, I'm surprised we didn't do uh, in 2020. I'm surprised we didn't do a Fantasy Star Online 10th Anniversary Podcast, 10th Anniversary Podcast, <laughs> where we just play <laughs> clips from the podcast and then reminisce about recording it. Yeah. Well, uh, we're coming up on the 20th. <laughs> That's right. Okay, let's do it for the 20th. We're in 2024 now. It's just a few short years more until we're at 2030. Shit. Uh, yeah, it was also an excuse for me to uh, play that original like teaser trailer of PSO, which had like crazy. Oh yeah, image. and it, we cover yeah, that. That's I, right. I, I I take See, the time to do that. That's it. Extra interesting to me now, knowing uh, how those things are cast, because I was almost cast in a oh. video game trailer. Yeah. And yeah, they just they just send those jobs out to people who are registered in a VO database and they're just like, hey, you want to do this? And yeah, so I think wow. that guy was is probably just I'm I'm sure it was different back then, but um I'm yeah, I'm really curious to know like what the the voiceover climate was like in Japan back then. Right. And like what uh life was like for those folks. I, I don't know, that kind of stuff fascinates me. Because yeah, that guy does have a very kind of unique delivery on a lot of those lines and he he does sound like a guy who just like lives in Japan I guess and yeah, yeah let's get let's get the uh, Barry to do the PSO voiceover <laughs> he probably still works if I had to guess he probably lives in Japan probably still does yeah. that work he's probably on NHK world for all I know but yeah yeah um I think that is the story though it's just a bunch of expats who yeah. much like you are in a database somewhere and you just get <laughs> queued yeah. up when you're needed. I've also, uh, uh, I mentioned before on No More Whoppers, there was an interview with the woman who uh, was the voice of Mega Man in Mega Man 8. Oh, okay. And a Mega Man fan podcast did a really good interview with her and she explains her whole story and everything. And I was saying like how uh, she's also still kicking around because I also saw her on NHK World. <laughs> Like doing a oh. uh, an English language show, and she's also like a really successful real estate mogul or something. Also in Japan, I don't whoa, know, in Japan, like, yeah, something like that. Uh, oh, wild! Maybe not to that degree, but she did done well on real estate, and uh, also just making a lot of educational content for Japanese people. And so, uh, cool, yeah, uh, Ruth Jarman. Yeah, I talked about this a while ago. 
on the show, but yeah. Cool. Yeah, I will bring it up to you again because uh, it's interesting. Just a good story. Nice. Yeah. Cool lady. Yeah, this is because this is the bonus show, and I don't think it matters. I can I can say what the job I didn't get was, but um, they asked me to voice the trailer for Monster Hunter. What was the phone? The smartphone Monster Hunter game. The Pokemon Go type one. Monster Hunter Now. I think so. Yeah, that's it. Monster Hunter Now. But it wasn't even a trailer for the game. It was a. Tra- it was like a consideration package for an award show. Okay. So it was like sub trailer, but it was at least something that I was excited for and then ended up not getting. Wow. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Wow. We'd like to, yeah. Yeah. They said, we'd like to go in a different direction, a good direction. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, all right, guys. I mean, that's kind of harsh, but all right. That's funny. Holy shit. No, they're, they're, they're very nice about it. this particular agency is, is. They're almost too nice about it. Like they put little emoticons <laughs> in the all emails right. when they let me down gently. It's yeah. like, all right, thanks. Sure. You don't need to do that. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> Capcom, by the way, still has uh, what I would call an amazing quote unquote reputation with their uh, dubbing of video presentations. Like if they do stuff yeah. now for the E3 season or what was E3 season where they'll do their version of Nintendo Direct. Just excruciating. (laughs) It's just typical corporate Japanese presentation type stuff. And it's like, you're Capcom. You've made these last two Resident Evil games that are (laughs) so vibrant with like dialogue. You can't learn from that for your actual marketing video material. Anyway. No. I mean, but isn't it all of that dialogue is written by, you know, non-Japanese people. Okay. (laughs) It's just a fantasy. It's just something I wish would happen. That's all. <laughs> yeah. I wish some lessons would be learned. No. People might want to observe what the rest of the company is making. Be as good as that. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So we did the Fantasy Star Online podcast. And then a year after that, in 2011, the Dragon Quest Anniversary podcast. Uh, so yes, like Alex said, uh, he was joining me at my apartment for that. And uh, we just did like, was it like two days? I think we did like a bunch of parts. We went through every Dragon Quest game at the time, just like uh, talking about it, anything important <laughs> that you remember or yeah. whatever. Uh, well, I, I, I don't know if it was that trip, but one of the, I think one of the times, <laughs> certainly one of the times we've both uh, just cracked up laughing the most together oh, no. was when. Oh, uh, no. I- <laughs> I'm going to go. <laughs> you do your best. <laughs> it's the bonus show. I can tell a gross story on the bonus show. <laughs> sure. Um, maybe it was. I don't remember when when Dragon Quest Six came out on the DS, but uh, yeah. I, I we went out shopping and I bought a physical copy, and then we came home and I was so excited to play it. I put it in my DS or 3DS, and I took it into your bathroom, and then it's funnier to me from your point of view because <laughs> I <outside>. bet. <laughs> You you just hear the Dragon Quest overture at maximum volume. <laughs> and then just awful poo noises. <laughs> and then you started laughing. And that's when I realized, oh, he can hear all of this. And then I started laughing too. <laughs> so wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> what? Are you implying you turned it up to max volume thinking that <laughs> I wouldn't hear it? <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, I thought just it's just my my natural inclination. If I'm playing a new game, let's crank the volume and, <laughs> and listen to it. <laughs> okay. I all right. This entire time I thought you were trying to do a bit. No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were doing a bit of let me crank up the volume and then I'll fart in time to the music. <laughs> No, no, that was no, that was not intentional. That was that was just me trying to enjoy uh-huh. a, a well crafted video game software uh, in my leisure time. Well, uh, and then I I realized how silly I realized how funny it must have sounded to you, and that cracked me up. Yeah, you are patently insane. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yes, it oh. was a very funny moment, but <laughs> Jesus Christ! Outstanding. It was outstanding. Too bad it's not recorded. 
I've, I've, I'm, th- I could probably try to recreate it in audio. I did the next best thing, which is me trying to plink out that the overture on that uh, I- iOS keyboard. That was, iOS <laughs> that was a, yeah, that was yeah. a incredible, very shitty flute esque. I did, I, I did use that, and I think our final Dragon Quest theme remix. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. here the noble really overs. Yeah. Oh, please bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> and we'll put it oh, here as a God. special stinger. Please. All right, fine. All right. I'll see if I can find it. Anyway. Uh <laughs> Hey Ray, play me some Dragon Quest. Okay. So the podcasts were fun, and like I said, we already had RSS built in, so we just threw it up on there, and no matter where I move the site now, like the files will still be there, and the RSS feed will still work the same way. So uh, hopefully, our recordings, along with the rest of the website, will still uh, be there, outlive us, in fact. But, um, Forever. 2011 was the podcast I... Uh, there is one other thing you, at the end of 2011, I think right after the Dragon Quest podcast, you did your Dragon Quest, Dragon Warrior 3 walkthrough. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Is that when that released? I started writing that in, I remember I started writing that in my first apartment in like 2003, 2004. Yeah, you procrastinated a bit. I do remember that. And so. It, I do. It's probably because I wasn't getting paid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I don't know why you. My ass. I don't know why you went through with it, but nevertheless, you did just end up uh, putting that on Chrome um, Games. Wait, what year was that? October fifteenth, twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. So I was already. That's interesting. I think I had recently gotten reemployed. Okay. I think that's when I got my my first ALT job because I was unemployed <laughs> this... since the end. So Nova went under in. Uh, August, September, 2007, I believe. And then yeah. for from that time until about 2010, uh, God, about three years, I just kind of floated around teaching private lessons and not really doing anything. Mm-hmm. Like I was, it's astounding to look back on myself from that time uh, and see like, I wasn't, I, I was paying my rent most of the months. Um, I was routinely <laughs> like forgetting to pay utilities and they would shut off my gas and I'd have to take cold showers in oh February. Um, I would be, I would get paid for teaching private English lessons and then waste all of the money that night at the bar. All right. Um, That's not good. Yeah. No, it's not. Um, yeah. I look back now and like, and also I wasn't paying into my healthcare and pension, which is illegal. Um, yeah, for three uh, years, lovely. Japan. So that when I eventually, when I eventually got back on the system, they were like, "Yeah, you owe back pay of <sighs> like." It was six digits in yen, six digits of yen. Um, oh my but, god! Uh, that sounds like a Donnie Yen film that I want to. <laughs> six digits of yen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's well, got a six fingered punch technique. Right. Like that. Um, having oh man, I, I feel like it took me like thirty five years to grow up. <laughs> And I Uh just all of that time was spent not knowing what to do or how to do it. Uh, And in some cases, not wanting to do it because a lot of that was just me being depressed and drinking all day, every day yeah, and not getting anything done. And I think me landing this ALT job was the very first um, time after three years that I felt like I was making progress. Right. And I I think I was inspired by that and it made me kind of get back to work on this side project that I had started in college and never maybe, finished. Maybe it was also just in tandem with the fact that you were, you'd were you probably just come back from visiting me because the Dragon Quest podcast had happened in September. You were like, oh, Dragon Warrior 3, I remember that. I like that That's video right. game. Let's finish that guide. Sure. Granted, my explanation, much simpler. I don't know. <laughs> I know you were going through some other stuff, but I was just thinking like, hell yeah. Also, that podcast happened. 
I think at the at the time I was also doing a podcast, I do that other podcast with the guy locally. That other podcast, um, yes, you were. And I th- I think I was I was like we also tried to start up a blog to go with the podcast, and I wasn't <laughs> yes. happy with what I was writing on that site, and I think I wanted to get back to writing something sort of more for my own voice. You always have a home at crunkgames.com. That's our slogan. To ourselves. Uh, that's right. Because you're not invited. Nobody use it. I, no. That's right, Jeffrey. Hey, it's my cousin. <laughs> I hope he listens to this. Hi, Jeff. You know Jeffrey's favorite animal? <laughs> you might have seen Jeffrey. He was at my wedding. Uh, Sure. All yeah. right. I saw a lot of people there. That's right. And it was a vow renewal. You would already, yes, already met it, right? Thank you. Really the, the original VW. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, VR? Why did I say VW? I, uh, hmm. What am I, Elmer Fudd? A vow we knew all? <laughs> Even your initials are fudd esque. God, look, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come clean. I am been trying to drink less coffee these days, uh-huh. and I did not have coffee today, and it's made me so very slow this episode. Right. And I do apologize. No, you're okay. You're doing uh, fine. Oh boy. In fact, uh, I think we're at my last topic I wanted to talk about. Okay. Because we did all this great content, and we just kind of left it, and that's good. And when we made it just shy of 10 years, though. Wow. If you think about like the entire thing, if we just go by 2011, that was the last thing published that was new, that was just like two more years, and we would have made 10. And so, yeah. uh, pretty crazy, don't you think? Sure, it wasn't like consistent, but we kept it, and it is still up, thanks to me, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hopefully it'll still be up. Yeah. Um, but another thing I want to talk about is that even though I redesigned the site and took some things down, removed some stuff, uh, as the years went on after that, I decided to, you know, have further removal of questionable content. And so oh, there course. were things where we used the F slur and the R slur and any other adjacent bad humor that we had written and I had, you know, retained on that redesign. I was just kind of cleaning up. And that includes also unpublishing the Joel feature and right. uh, writing all that stuff. Because uh, even though Joel allegedly said his mom even liked that article or found it funny or something, I don't know how much to believe him, but uh, I felt it probably didn't do Joel a, whole, a large favor in the end to keep it up. So I just took it down. But originally, like I left this all up, other than the obvious things I said, you know, the outdated stuff. Because... I, I kind of took the approach of me or us like owning it, you know, like, yes, we know this is juvenile. Yeah. We know we were doing this back then and we're definitely not like this. Now, if anybody asks, you know, we denounce it, we're not like this anymore, but we own that and we don't want to like completely, you know, ruin our, our, the work that we had up there, I guess. I, right. I don't know. Maybe well, that's know not what? the entire best way to put it, but that was like me just saying, hey, we're owning it. I've actually prepared an image, I think, that we can just put on the main page that explains all of this directly. I'm going to send it to you right now on Discord. <clears throat> all right. There we go. <laughs> oh, yes, the WB cartoon warning, yes. Yeah. The cartoons, <laughs> just throw that up there. The cartoons you're about to see are products of their time, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we were cartoons. <laughs> yes. The, this fan site was wrong then, and it's wrong now. But <laughs> even saying that I own it, I felt like I kind of went back on that later and now it's because I felt now like if the site is still up and live while I am still up and live, then <laughs> it inevitably does represent who I am and not who I was. And I, I rationalize this by saying like some generally bad writing is fine because every article has the date it was published and people can see just how old it is. But for me, you know, for the stuff that wasn't appropriate, even back then, it just made sense to clean it up. And it's archived anyway. It's all on the Wayback Machine, the various versions of CrumbGames.com, uh, kind of by my own hand. So, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, even even Joel's uh, All Races Ranked article. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Written that by me. No. No. no um, but I, so it's like, if you really want to go see what shitheads we were before that, I can't stop you. Because yeah. it's all on there anyway. It's on a third party site. Yeah. But obviously, you can see now, by interacting with us on the internet today, like we stopped writing like that. And you can even see, after a couple of years on Crunk Games, we kind of stopped writing like that 
like with all of the, you know, 2006 and on stuff, like, no, you don't need to try this hard to be funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think it's, it's almost too obvious to say at this point, but like, it's, let's focus on who the person is now, as opposed to who they were when they were growing up yeah. and didn't know shit from Dick. And yeah, cause I, yeah, I think it is important to keep the site up. Um, I mean, also just because it's like, it is sort of an artifact of that age of the internet where two idiots thought that, hey, this is an important thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. we should uh, write about all of this. Yeah. I thought at the time that I was being different or like more accurately better than what I thought were the lower grade websites or the writers or the yeah. content, as well as, you know, being better than the fanboys and the forum nerds. But the truth is, I think probably about what half of I wrote that wasn't about an actual game, that is to say stuff that was informational, was ultimately kind of perpetuating that same iffy culture of the time. Yeah. And. Because it's all we knew. Uh, yeah. But I do feel bad that I was peppering a portfolio of work like this in this kind of lightweight sort of Adam Carolla type bullshit. Mm. Why? Because it might make Alex laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it did. And, you know, I, I go back on this still, and this is kind of why I wanna, wanted to do this podcast as well, because I keep thinking like, yeah, I, I said I owned it, but like the people who are coming to the site now, or, 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 or if they had to come to the site then and had seen the, all the bad words and stuff, oh, nobody's yeah. going to go and ask me. Nobody knows I'm even around to ask me, hey, why'd you write it like this? Like, no, they're just going to be like turned off by the fact that I wrote that. And... Yeah. I still keep thinking like this kid, me, like keeps writing sex jokes and using the word f a lot, but also earnestly loves the sentimental summer vacation game. <laughs> like, how can anyone reconcile that? How can I yeah. have well, anyone talk or halfway like me or even be a friend on paper? Right. And like, I, we had yeah. friends like that, some of whom are gay or would even later transition people who yeah. we met during this time and still, you know, I consider friends. And it's just like, how do you reconcile that? <laughs> well, yeah, I think it's just because language is is language and and the usage of language are constantly evolving. Not to say that using it back then was okay, but that it's become, I think, very clear now that it's not okay. Yeah, and I also think that there's also an element of using language ironically with a friend group that. Uh, do you understand each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I do believe that, like, if you're with your friends and you and your friends each know that you're yeah. good, decent people, you can say whatever awful things you want. Yeah, you're true. Because you know that you're not doing it sincerely, because you know each other's heart well enough that, like, oh, this isn't a hateful person. You're just doing it for the sake of a joke that is just between us. When you move that to a front facing website, you cannot just assume, oh, you're all cool and you get the joke, right? Like, right. I'm joking, right? You guys know that, right? Cool. Like, you can't do that. I feel like that, yeah, that was kind of our fallacy there. Yes, is we we tried to take our private language, I guess, and then try to pivot it to the audience. Like, look at all the, look at all the goofy uh, things we say to each other in private. Now we yeah. say it on our website. Like, well, you probably shouldn't. Yeah, I was going through the site, you know, in preparation for this podcast a while ago, and I had found some other thing that I didn't think to clean up, which was just like a lame joke about booth babes, like a crack at <laughs> booth babes, like completely like base level, unoriginal shit. And I'm like, that's not even nice to anybody. <laughs> yeah. Just that's so I, I scrubbed that and yeah, that's yeah. That's another, that was like aspect. last year. <laughs> See, that's, that's, I talk about this a lot, but that's an aspect of the site where that honestly, that sounds like something I would have written because it sounds like a lazy joke when I needed to have one yeah. and I was I just default to oh yeah we make fun of booth babes right okay yeah, yeah okay there right. let's just do that then it's well, just it's just oh that's a punching bag I know yeah that's yeah. not a human being and yeah there's no thought in it there's not like I'm sitting yeah. back and stroking my beard going what would IGN say that's offensive about <laughs> this yeah. uh, no it's just a thing that pops in your head because you're lazy and you just want to write the thing and you want to publish it and you're not going to think about it for another 20 years. But yeah. uh, low hanging fruit is boring. Yeah. I guess if there's any kind of bright side to that is that me and you, we weren't alone in this. And I think lots of other 20 year olds were figuring it out on the internet. And yes, uh, in our case, I think people got to see us grow up somewhat yes. into what I we are that's now. That's great. And yeah. And I'm glad. Adult fuck ups. 
Oh. <laughs> well, yeah. But I'm glad that I did grow up and that despite what I wrote, I didn't have institutional hate in me. Like, I. Oh, God. No. Yeah. I, I, I sort of touched on this a few episodes ago, but like, I didn't go the incel route, right? I yeah. never had an anime girl as a profile picture or that sort of thing. <laughs> like, even on the darkest days, I just tried to hang on to some semblance of rational thought through the entire thing. And so I think <laughs> at the end of this, is an apology. And yeah. like I said, we we knew people who uh, were gay and transitioning, maybe not then, but certainly now. And the kind of jokes that we cracked both on the site and even maybe in IRC among some of those same people, just like, I certainly don't feel great about it. And if that made anybody like that feel uncomfortable, I certainly uh, apologize for it. Yeah. And that's why now- yeah, 100%. I have done my best to scrub crunk games of most of that really bad stuff or what I consider to be really bad as it stands now on the live site. Cause again, yeah, sure. You can go back and look on the way back machine. I'll own that. I guess I own the fact that it is still up on the internet in some form, but not on the live current version that we would like to represent us. I'd also like to emphasize that like it was, you know, it was a couple of word choices here and there. It wasn't like the focal point of no. any of the articles, you it know, was, it was, but it was I, enough. I feel like that made it worse in a sense. Cause like, Oh really? Well, you know, when we have a, a deck of an article that's just like uses the word f- for no reason, like it's like swiping at someone. <laughs> it's like, you're kind of yeah. getting electrically shocked on your hand or something. You're like, Whoa, what the fuck was that? <laughs> Where did that yeah. come well, from? I think it's because we were still using it in the the childish school ground sense of like we don't we didn't really know yeah that it was offensive to someone. We just thought it was a generic term for like yeah oh you're an idiot or whatever yeah uh, and then and then later you grow up and you realize oh no it has it has a real caustic origins right yeah like oh maybe it's better to not use that all the time then yeah and so uh, that's uh, just how I want to end it on just like an apologetic note. Um, Alex, do you have any kind of final thoughts here on the website, on your experience, on your early 2000s? I don't know that I do. It's um, That's okay. it certainly a transitional phase for both of us and, and me in many ways, certainly. Um, learning how to write better, trying to cultivate a better sense of humor, um, and honestly battling with my rising disinterest in video games. At the time. And the fact that the industry was just kind of looking less and less appealing to me as time went on. Um, but uh, but I still had fun. All right. Yeah. It was still pretty good. I'm, I'm glad I was able to write the few things that I did. Yeah. It was definitely one of those, um, one of those exercises in, uh, it kind of taught me how good it felt to conceive an idea and write it out and edit it and post it. And... Even if I, like, I don't know who read any of the things I posted. I don't know if I got any feedback on any of it from anybody. I was just right. doing it because I wanted to. It was just an artistic expression of, like, hey, let's write a dumb feature about XYZ. Let's let's cover this game that I really like. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, it, it reminded me how good it feels to create. And and th- honestly, that's what I'm rediscovering now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, as, I, as, as I'm in a se- another transitionary period where I'm, uh, in the in the process of closing the bar and leaning full time into uh, creating things, it reminded me. Oh yeah, it feels really good to create something and have it out there, and and see people enjoy it. Right. Yeah, I fully agree, and I'm yeah. just generally proud. I made a website to write about video games, <laughs> and then kind of also turned it into like a magazine later because. Scroll really is just kind of like Crunk Games as a magazine, just better looking. Yes. The original uh, name was uh, Crunk Mobile, Crunk to Go. That's not true, but... <laughs> no? All right. But that was also fun, and it's because of how I started to do things on Crunk Games, and in some ways also just starting out learning those things at the GIA and such. Um, yeah, I don't have much to add to that. I totally agree with you. But uh, as a final note, does anybody want to give us $38,000? so last year wordpress announced that they are offering people what they call the 100 year plan what this is in a nutshell is that they will host your website guaranteed for 100 years if you pay them thirty eight thousand dollars and so hang on 
Do you want to do that? <laughs> Should we make sure uh, that uh, Crunk Games lives on well past our lives? That's that's three hundred and eighty bucks a year. How is that a good deal? When you put it that way, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yes, they announced this last August. What did they say here? This brand new offering is for families who wish to preserve their digital assets. Founders who want oh. to protect and document their company's past, present, and future. I think we're a company, right? You and me were a partnership. Yeah. I gave you That's 50% right. on the Washington State business license. Um, uh, wait, what? I'll, did you? Yeah. Should that have been reflected in my taxes at any point? <laughs> no, it was just a business license. It wasn't a, oh. an incorporation. Okay. <laughs> it was just a thing to get into E3. <laughs> okay. And it doesn't <laughs> exist anymore. <laughs> You're fine. Good. Oh, just like E3. I don't know. Maybe I'll get a letter later. I don't know. No, it's been too late. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, and also for individuals seeking a stable, flexible, and a customized online home that can adapt to whatever changes the future of technology will bring. Okay, sure. Uh, they also include century-long domain registration, so crunkgames.com for 100 years. Even more peace of mind. As guardians of your life's work, we take our duty seriously. At the platform level, we maintain multiple backups of your content across geographically distributed data centers. Automatically submit to your site to the Internet Archive if it's public. Okay, well, I already did that. And we'll provide an optional locked mode. And some other floofy stuff telling you that it's a good investment. Well, I mean, 100 years is great, but why stop there? <laughs> yes. You know, why? Um, it's do, at do we least, get a discount guess, for, yeah. Do we get a discount for 1,000 years? Apparently not. Because it's 380,000 for 1,000 years. The best they can do is 100. What? Yeah, sorry. But think about it. 38K, right. we move crunkgames.com to the eternal cloud, and we're set. How, how much does it cost us now? Uh, zero. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's keep doing that. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> there. Hang on, wait, hang on. No, let me, let me just crunch the numbers to make sure it's a better deal. All right. Zero times 100. Yeah, it's a better deal still. Right. <laughs> okay, fine. It's on Oracle's servers, though. What if Oracle goes out of business? Um, <laughs> shit. <laughs> you didn't think of that, did you? Didn't think of that. All right, uh, let's, uh, how much? Okay. You know, the other thing is that the entire website is like just over one gigabyte. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And you can and you can probably guess that what blows that up is the podcasts. <laughs> so we have like oh, two God, yeah. very long MP3s. And that's about it. That really ballooned that number. Otherwise, it's like, I think, 780 megabytes or something. <laughs> wow. Ju you know what? Just like our beloved video games of old. Almost squeezing, squeezing yeah. bytes onto a cartridge. The game is small, yeah. <laughs> and that one digitized voice clip they played during the title screen or the ending is most of what's taken up the space. <laughs> yeah, you could almost fit the website on a CD. Yeah, wow, a DVD. Yes, absolutely. Are, are we giving out DVDs of CrunkGames.com yeah. at our next appearance? <laughs> if, if someone really wants a DVD copy of the of what exists now of crunkgames.com, sure. I mean, I mean I've I've oh, saved whole websites before, you bet. To read later. I mean, would wouldn't it be cheaper to do it on CD? I'm I'm sure we could uh cut trim trim some of the fat, you know? I don't know. That's the weird thing about tech sometimes, right? Because like you can get like a 256 mega or gigabyte uh SD card for like five bucks. But if you want to find if you actually want like a 32 gigabyte one it's like seven bucks because like now they're not as common. The more common ones are the 128 and 256 ones. So yeah. Yeah. Who knows, man? Maybe. Who knows? And CDs are coming back in style and people want the extra nice uh, recordable formats and stuff. Wait, so, CDs are coming back? Well, I, I'm being somewhat facetious, but tapes oh. are back. CDs. I heard that gum you like is coming back. CDs stock. have still been around, of course, but yeah. Okay. Kids are now into uh, digital cameras, old ones. Like the Zoomers okay. collect uh, old digital cameras. Wow. Nikon Minolta. Yeah. I mean, I, I right. kind of saw that coming. I figured that might be coming down the line. Yeah. So, yeah. Even though the resolutions are bad and such, like they're getting yeah, creative wait, what with is it. The attraction, what is the attraction to old digital cameras when their phone can do the same thing for the butt better 
Well, it's like a mixture of, well, the obvious things, nostalgia, but also uh, appreciation for that older kind of look or aesthetic, right? And uh, you get that even in an old digital camera. It's just a little extra convenient because it still comes out as a JPEG or whatever, and you don't have to actually get any film developed. But it is still, right. it is still technically an old picture with old technology. So I'm, I'm sure that's why they love it. And I'm sure there's plenty of people collecting them as well. <laughs> collecting them not I, just to resell them, but to appreciate the designs of that uh, 2000s technology and whatnot. I hear you and I choose to believe you. Well, good. That's all I need is your belief. Good. You got it. All right. So once again, patreon.com slash no more whoppers in our new $38,000 tier <laughs> called the time um, capsule. <laughs> We're just going to pay WordPress and keep the site up as long as we I can. I mean, let's also keep in mind, let's also keep in mind, you know, pay, um, Patreon takes a cut of that. <laughs> so it's, I mean, you should uh, probably round it up to like 40K. Yeah, you're right. I guess so, huh? Taxes, man. They always get you in the end. Yeah. Yes, yeah, the finger thing means the taxes. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. But for now, yes, Crunk Games still lives. I've kept it up all this time, even when the domain name was stolen, when our web host went down mysteriously, <laughs> and I had to... Wait, what? Yeah, so we originally had it on a two-bit web host called fooeytodd.net. <laughs> Who is Fooey? Is that like Sweeney Todd's shitty cousin? F-U-I-T-A-D. Okay. Oh, that uh, sounds... I only did it because okay. it was cheap, and we had it on there for a few years. And then the site mysteriously went down, and I wasn't sure what was up. And so I tried to get in touch with Fooey Todd, and uh, even called a number, a customer service number that they listed, and actually did speak to a real person, a woman who uh, was very kind and was very understanding of the situation, and said she would call me back. Did not call me back, ever. Did oh. not even uh, acknowledge my presence after the fact anymore. And so uh, they eventually, I guess, went out of business and uh, took everybody's domain name with them and sold it off to a, uh, basically a, like a domain name consignment company. Uh, oh, boy. Which was like legit. They were legit. They had just bought off all these domain names from this failed web host. But, you know, without knowing that, without knowing anything that had happened, I had to go and find it on this website and see and try to wrest it back <laughs> from this uh, other company. And so I had sent them a nice email and did that whole rigmarole and they wanted an ID. And so I provided them identification and documentation to give every shred of proof that yes, I was the original owner of this domain name. I bought it. Can I please have crunkgames.com back? And uh, they, 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 they did it. They were nice. They went without, okay, good. Went, went on without a hitch and I got it back and I'm hanging on to it for dear life. God damn it. And <laughs> the site is still up come hell or high water. And uh, yeah, I, I, not letting go, not letting go. We did it. Yeah. Now, there have been hiccups right. every now and then. There's been downtime, of course, as I've moved to another server or something. But it's only getting easier these days to just move a website and can reconfigure a domain name and all that stuff. So, yeah, I don't think there's much much more issue in the future. That's right. Squarespace.com. Use promo code CRON. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Do not do that. No, no. Uh, Squarespace is highway robbery. Don't do that. Well, now I'm on Squarespace uh, by default because I got shoved over there thanks to Google Domain shutting down. Oh, the domain name, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I accidentally... Oh, my hosting, my, my buddy Paul hosts my site. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. He's very graciously uh, hosting my personal site on his own server. Paul, I'll give you $38,000. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> To keep me alive for a hundred years? Oh yeah, can you do it, Paul? Let us know. I, I don't know. He's got a three D printer. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> silly Alex. <laughs> well, uh, that's yeah. that's the Crunk Game story. Um, I thought I would leave it on a high note there with my domain name X Escapade. That's that's a good high note, and we're not done yet. There's going to be one more. 
Uh, yeah, let's have an epilogue. And so I want to talk about things that aren't actually related to Crunk Games, but it will be a larger story about what happened to us after that. So more about my time at oneup.com, uh, more about you being a guy in Japan, I suppose. Uh, maybe we can Hi. fit in a fake priest story in there. Oh, uh, of course. Uh, no real plans other than that. We're just going to have, I think, a f- more free-form discussion about what we were doing for the several I'll be, years I'll be, after that. I'll be eating a bowl of pasta salad the entire yeah. time. Let's just say it'll be like the rest of the 2010s. <laughs> okay. Super cash, yes. We'll talk about some of that. And That's a good idea. That'll be right after this one. It's our a game site about nothing epilogue. Look forward to it. And uh, yeah, once again, Alex, uh, thanks for all your input. I think you did a great job. Uh, this is uh, anytime. This is what I wanted out of this. I wanted to talk about the good times and the bad times and everything in between. And we did it. Yeah, I'm glad we could uh, get it all off our chest, more or less. And so, yeah. video games and their websites and the men who love them. That's the theme of it. Thanks That's everybody us. for listening. We'll catch you next time for the epilogue. But for now, formally, we can say that's been the end. Thanks so much. We'll catch you then.